So, SO4, 2 negative, is the sulfate ion on the periodic table. If you count the number of valence electrons, group 6 and group 6 times 4, well actually that's really group 6 times 5, right? That's 30, plus the 2 negative, 32 total valence electrons. When you put sulfur in the middle and 4 oxygens around it, take a look. You got 2, 4, 6, 8, 8 times 4, that's 32. We're done. And look at the sulfur's happy. 2, 4, 6, 8, everybody's got an octet, 2 negative charge, there's sulfate. It's beautiful. It's got to be right. It's not. And here's the reason. Well, here's the, here's the fact first. The fact is that these are all S to O single bonds. And there's a certain amount of bond energy, of course, and bond length that's ascribed to that bond. You know what? Um, S with a single bond, S with a double bond, has a certain bond length. This one's shorter, this one's longer, but all of these bond lengths are actually in between the two. And you're going to say, well, that means then that there's resonance involved. But there's no resonance here. Okay, can sulfur exceed the octet rule? Yes, it can, because it's not in period number two of the periodic table. And sometimes, when an element can exceed the octet rule, it does exceed the octet rule, and that actually makes a more stable molecule, really. The more bonds that are going to form, the more energy is released, and that's a good thing for stability. So really, what's going to happen here is this. Um, and, and, and the concept here is how we're going to be able to calculate whether or not we need to do this is by giving every one of these elements here an assigned number called a formal charge. Here's how you calculate a formal charge. Take the atom's uh, normal, uh, 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 what, we could, what we say on the periodic tables, valence number, right, whatever group it's in, take that free atom valence, that's what it's called, and then subtract from it what we have here as an assigned valence. And the assigned valence is just take all the lone pairs, but only half of the bonding electrons, and that's called an assigned valence. Now watch how that works. For this oxygen right here, it's normally in group six, right? Group six of the periodic table. But what's its assigned valence in this molecule? Two, four, six, and half the bonding electrons means seven. 6 minus 7 equals negative 1. <laughs> That's just called the formal charge. So here's what you do. You just put negative 1s underneath all of these right here. You just say, these are all negative 1, just to tell yourself. And what's the sulfur? Well, sulfur is normally in group 6. Group 6. But in this case, sulfur is assigned, well, half the bonding electrons around it. Well, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, because that's 2, 4, 6, 8 total. But you only give half of the bonding electrons. 1, 2, 3, 4. 6 minus 4 is plus 2, and that's what this is right here. Do you know what's really best? For every atom in a molecule, the best thing for it to be is 0. Because if your assigned valence can match your free atom valence on the periodic table, that's the best thing for an element to have. Well, here's the deal. None of these right here, none of them are 0. So what we got to do is we got to make zero. Now you want to know the best way to do that? It's kind of a cheat, but it works great. Take the central atom. You know that it wants to be whatever its group number is, and give it as many bonds, generally, this will not always work out, but give it as many bonds as its group number, and it works. Watch. Sulfur is in group six and can't exceed the octet rule, so it does. One, two, three, four is what we put normally, right? So what we're going to do is put 5, 6. How's that? Okay. Now, the rest of the lone pairs are put into this molecule. Whoops. And you know what? When you total all of that up, that's 32. All I did was just basically take two of these lone pairs and stuck them into bonds here, right? But what does that give you? Sulfur is normally in group 6. What's its assigned valence here? Half the bonding electrons total. One, two, because there's two in each bond here, so I only count one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six minus six equals zero. It's got a formal charge of zero. So do these oxygens, because they're in group six. And look what they've got. Two, four, five, six. So that's a zero. And that's a zero. 
And you're saying, that's great, but these guys are still negative ones because they haven't changed from this other one. I know. And guess what? The total number of charges inside here must equal in a proper molecule, to see if you've done it right, the charge on the molecule itself. 0, 0, 0, minus 1, minus 1, total is negative 2. You know you've done it right. That is so cool. All right, well, anyway, that is right the, now the, the best Lewis diagram for SO42 negative. Well, we'll do another one here in a second. But here's the deal, by the way. You realize, of course, that this is going to have resonance. And all you have to do is include, you know, like the double bonds didn't have to be here and here. They could have been here and here, right? So you go back over to here and you go, and then you go, which I don't know if that's a correct pronunciation in German, but and I should be embarrassed because that's my last name. It's German, but you know. Uh, and what do you do? You put the multiple bonds here and here, choink, choink. And now, ladies and gentlemen, look at that. You've got the resonance there, and that is the resonance diagram and the diagram for sulfate. You have to calculate formal charge.